I don't like seminars. So the only thing worse than one of these is uh, like a Zoom, okay? And I, of course, I don't have to wear pants to those. And if you want to nod, it's okay. I will wake you up for the uh, important parts. All right, this is good. This is the biggest cycle con I've ever been to. They're going to have between 10 and 20,000 people here today. Every time I do an event, I tell people there's going to be between 10 and 20,000 people. We have 800, and that is between 10 and 20,000, isn't it? <laughs> and when you, when, you, when you talk to a small group, you say, you know, it's a small group, but it's focused. We are the important ones, okay? Um, recumbent bicycles um, are something I've been riding probably almost five decades. I bought a, uh, I bought a, uh, a Tour Easy, no, a Gold Rush, at the uh, Carlisle Auto Show in 1980. It was used in a uh, feature film, uh, A Night in Heaven, and uh, we started selling them after that. Back then it was an Easy Racer or a Lightning. Anybody re recognize those names, Lightning? Um, the Lightning was the gold standard of short wheelbase. The Easy Racer was the gold standard of above seat steering, long wheelbase. Dick Ryan had the under seat steering. Uh, I happen to have landed on above seat steering, but Dana later will be talking about two wheel recumbents, how it's uh, not going away, okay? Now, I, I think we sell nine tricycles to every one two wheeler, and uh, some of the people with those try to mix in with these, uh, the sleeveless overachiever crowd. Doesn't work that well on a trike. You can do that with a recumbent. If you have a situation where you have balance issues or can't afford to fall or you're not gonna be out in traffic, then the, the higher position is uh, more advantageous. Thin air repairs. I got the name from Jim Langley from Bicycling Magazine. This is a good spot, a good spot here. So I just grabbed a bunch of props. Uh, two of my favorite books are What's All the Hubbub, Diana Lee's up in Cleveland, and Just Ride, both out of print. I have some copies, okay? And I just brought some props with me and I'm just gonna start spilling things out, literally. This is my thin, thin air bag that I take to a lot of things. I got a call two weeks ago from a, uh, a tour operator in uh, Oregon uh, while well, he's out of California and it was a, uh, a tandem bike tour and they had singles too that went from Portland to Clarkston. You know Clark never went to Clarkston and Lewis never went to Lewiston, okay? Is that trash? It is now, okay. And they said, can you go on this stern wheeler? And these people paid six large per person to go on this trip with a nice stateroom, four star meals every day. And they wanted somebody that could keep their bikes going, keep the fun between their legs. So on six day notice, I was on a flight to Portland and I joined the trip, okay? So, and I, I had some of my thin air stuff. I had a little bit different. Oh, if you like little tool kits, these little parts bins they sell, pay the 20 bucks and get a, uh, uh, a Husky or something. You can ride over this with a car and it's waterproof. How many parts bins have you gone through that just didn't work, okay? These are tough and it's got a handle on it and that's the way you carry your parts. So I. I have my things that everybody else forgot in here. Crazy glue, um, ESI tape. If you don't have ESI tape in your collection, you need to start using ESI tape. It seals, it seal, it sticks to itself, you stretch it, it seals copper pipes. Uh, I even used it, to my surprise on the trip, I just happened to have a roll with me, to fix a flat tire. I had no patches, I blew, inflated the tube rather, uh, to its normal shape, and I wrapped carefully the ESI tape, and at the end I stretched it, and it held air for the rest of the trip. Um, uh, I do things from the hip most of the time. Uh, I deal with a lot of uh, persnickety customers that, that uh, want perfection, and I can, I, can, I can live and work with them, okay? But uh, I'm just gonna randomly, uh, bicycles are one of those few things that you will own and deliver so much deliver so much for so little initial and ongoing investment. People will say, well, that's $1,500. I only have 1,000. I said, how long will you keep it? Five years? Oh, no, I'm keeping it 10 years. I said, 
I do a little Columbo. So let me see. And I mix Gump in there too sometime. I do a little, I said, oh, let's see, $500, that's $50 a year. That's about 17 cents a week for you to own the want to have versus the get by. Do you want things that get you by or do you want things that you want to have? That better bike or piece of equipment will last you longer. You'll look forward to riding it more. The cost per ride will go down. The $1,500 bike is $1,500 the first time you ride it. The second time it's $750, then it goes to five. Sooner or later it's gonna pay you back, okay? Uh, anybody ever heard of a parallel jaw plier? Okay, every other tool in the world, including a six point socket, a 12 point socket, or vice grips or slip jaw, only grab a couple of corners of that nut. If you have a nice bathroom fixture at home or a headset, the parallel jaw plier provides about 300 pounds of pressure here because it's 10 to one. And if you can put 30 pounds in your hand, 10 to one, I'll pass that around just in case. People like to fidget with things. Make sure I get it back. Um, air is free. Every pump comes with a lifetime supply. I'm not a gas user. Those little throwaways, we're kind of in an environmental business here. And the, and the main thing I don't like about the gas is it makes you lazy, okay? Little pump, you should be able to do that, okay? Who wants that little metal canister that you have to throw away just for a little bit of air? It's free, that's why I have a big nose. Okay. Um, oh, and you don't have to raise your hand to ask a question. And heckling is welcome. Bicycles are one of those few things that you'll own that not only give you more return than you paid in, but you can service yourself. We had a caloric oven in 1985, $1,000. It had a built-in microwave and metal racks. The microwaves knew how to work in there, but it went on the Fritz one, $1,000. It was a great machine because you could bake and microwave at the same time. Ordinarily no metal in a microwave. It went on the Fritz one day. The caloric man had to come out. He pulled it away from the wall. He pushed the reset button. Service call, $150. He gave it to me for 75, okay? I said, is, is it 75 to pull it out and 75 to push the button? <laughs> so you can service the bike yourself. And I've been doing that since, I got a 10 speed in 1961. It was 65, it was a Schwinn Varsity. It weighed more than I did. Okay, uh, it was one frame size fits all, but I used it and I learned about bicycles and I, I started my thin airing back then. You can do it yourself. You might get to a place where you can't do something anymore and a lot of people think you need fancy equipment, okay? Most of what I do with a bike, and I learned years ago, I do what I call right side up. Even if I have a work stand, a lot of people think the work stand or the truing stand is the magic machine. I don't own a, I build a lot of wheels at home and I don't own a truing stand. You notice I turn the handlebars backwards and it gives you a nice, the wheels fit in easily, the back wheel fits in easily. So it makes a lot of sense to uh, work in this fashion, okay? I can do things much easier. A lot of people say, well, I, and I'm, I'm way off the ADHD spectrum and I can get used to it. And if I can do it, you can do it. Also, when I carry these, uh, this is my bicycle. When I carry this on a car, I have a little tiny roller skate disguised as a car. I turn the, the fork backwards and it saves me about eight inches of space. I'm still inside my mirrors. So that's what I do with that. And you can do things yourself. When you get to a stopping point, you will call an expert. Sometimes it's that person in the neighborhood. Sometimes it's a bike shop. Be careful. These chain bike stores, Trek is buying up chains of 10 stores and eight stores and things like that. I go into one of those places, a tune-up. Most people don't need a tune-up. They don't need a tune-up. Air in the tires. They say, well, they're dry rotted. I say, so am I. It's not a, a sign of problem. Unless the tread is coming off the tire, you don't have a problem with that tire. Pump it up, put some oil on the chain, and go for a ride. And you don't need fancy oil on your chain. Transmission fluid or a lightweight non-detergent motor oil is fine. Most of the stuff you buy in the little containers is snake oil. Uh, it's some repackaged, and I, I, I did the numbers the other day. We bought some TriFlow. It's good stuff. It goes in cables better than motor oil, and it doesn't attract as much dirt in most cases, but I keep my chain clean. 
I did the cost of that stuff, <clears throat> and it comes out to $700 a gallon if you buy the little tubes. And the only thing worse is spoke freeze Loctite, the stuff you put in your spoke nipples after you true the wheel. That came out to, I, I, I said, let's go for a gallon. It came out to uh, uh, $1,800 a gallon for that spoke. No, it was $2,800 a gallon for that. Um, I sometimes carry a rope with me. Um, not only, it doesn't work as well on the recumbents, but on the upright bikes, I carry a long rope, and if you can't find one, you buy one. And I put it through a tree branch, and I hold the bike up, and then you can adjust your gears and things like that. So the rope has been very handy for me in uh, my repairs. <clears throat> the most common thing that happens on a bike, if your bike's in good shape before the trip, a flat tire, or a broken cable. We sell these tires now that are, I don't like to say solid, because that reminds me of the penny farthing days, airless. They give you about 90 to 95% of the ride comfort of an air tire, but freedom from worry. On e-bikes, I do as much as I can when it's a complicated wheel removal to prevent the flat. Puncture resistant inner tube, which won't pinch as easy. Uh, tire liner between the tire and the rim, they work real well. They kind of look like my ESI tape. Is that what it's called, ESI? Okay, um, it's great. And I, I, I'm a, uh, an eBay user. I, I avoid the sewer of Amazon. I look on eBay because it's independent people like me that are looking to sell things. Unfortunately, some of the eBay is fulfilled by Amazon and that scares me a little bit, but uh, I'm not gonna fight that. So if you have that flat on the road, um, here's one. This was from my trip to Cambodia. We had, this is from the Cambodia trip. There are nine patches on here. We didn't have another tube. What happened was it was on our tandem, recumbent front tandem, uh, uh, upright back. We didn't realize that we had a flat and we rode on this nasty road and we have patches on top of patches here. And that was a hating life day. We were only two miles from Angkor Wat, and uh, they were waiting for me to fix bikes, but the mechanic broke down. Uh, something I've learned about uh, tubes is uh, I prefer to use the little patch if you can find the hole, okay? If you can find the hole, I, I, I use a patch whenever I can, okay? Yesterday we had an actual blowout. This guy had a bad tire. But, um, uh, so I had to put a new tube in. But the patch is on top of patches. So a couple of secrets of patching tubes. Okay, first of all, if you have a Schrader valve wheel, don't even take the wheel off the bike, inflate it. Put a little body fluid or something on the valve. See if that's leaking. Don't tighten it. Little, remember the old valve cores, uh, caps with two prongs? If it's leaking, tighten it, and if it's not leaking after that, get on the bike and ride it. If that doesn't work, take the, if it's leaking, take the valve out, go to someone's car or another bike and steal a, a valve core, <laughs> put it in there, and uh, if that works, you're on your way. If that doesn't work, then take the wheel off and put the uh, thing on. So the, um, if you can find the hole, the secret of patching, and we're just gonna do make-believe here today, okay? Find the hole, don't say, there it is, there it is. Keep the fingers away. Even if you're a, a, a successful piano player or a, a hand person or a cosmetician, your hands have oil in them and other things that they pick up. So you take that, and I always have a brace of paper with me. Lightly sand it, okay, the area. If that doesn't work, uh, find a brick or cement Rub it on the cement or brick, okay? I've also used brick corners to cut metal as a hacksaw. So sand that down, find the hole, smear the glue. Smear the glue, lightly, lightly. The British say sparingly. Smear the glue on sparingly. The hole, when you find it, must be in the center of that smear area. The hole must, profound, must be in the area of that smear area. That way when you apply the patch, you'll get the patch in the middle of the hole, 
okay, or, or around the hole, concentric. Let that dry. Then inspect your tire, make-believe tire, okay? Inspect your tire. It's very easy to find the glass or the nail. You know how? Follow the blood. It'll take you right, the blood will lead you to the thing. After you do that, wipe out the tire. You, the best thing is to use a rag to, to check the inside of the tire. And even if that doesn't work, pinch that tire and you, if you find a thorn or glass, pick that out. One way to forensically find out where that hole is, is to once you identify the area of the hole, you can, when you take the tire off, you can go to that part of the tire. That's why a lot of people today put the labeling of the tire where the valve is. The labeling where the valve is. And no, don't flip the tire over. This will lead you to seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, where the thing is. And then you can look carefully and pull that out. If you have a cut in the tire, it's, you, can put, you can see your pinky through it, fret not. I have this amazing carbon fiber tape. When the $4,000 window broke out of my truck in the back, I went and got some plexiglass temporarily and I taped it in with this stuff. And you cannot rip it, they give you a knife with it. So um, some of the things I carry with me are the ESI tape, Vel ESI tape or the eBay, eBay. eBay. Uh, Ace Hardware. Yeah, it's not have, the same yeah. as Ace, Ace No, Hardware. no, no. Fiber Fix. Fiber Fix is an amazing, amazing company. Uh, I don't have it with me, but I keep a roll of Fiber Fix tape in it. I did a demonstration once where I took the fi Fiber Fix, you soak in water, and then it, they make casts out of it now for hands. I cut the frame down the middle. I wrapped it with fiber fix and it was as strong as the rest of the bicycle, okay? So that stuff is good. Velcro one wrap, you can never have too much of this. Buy the two inch, buy long roll. You can cut it into small strips to hold cables on. I run it through all my uh, toilet bowl handles and then I have a nice big loop to carry it on. If you forget your belt one day, you can use it as a belt. So one wrap, ESI, carbon, um, I carry epoxy with me sometime or uh, crazy glue for doing certain repairs. Back to the tube. Now that you've done the BSing, booting the tire, that's what this tape was for. They say a dollar bill will work. <laughs> it, or a power bar wrapper as a boot. A boot means the inner tube can't push its way out of the tire if you have a cut in it. The dollar bill doesn't work. That I, I, I used a five once, and I almost used a 20. We were on our recumbent tandem, a lot of force on the front wheel, a little 20, and the tire, uh, the uh, $20 bill looked like confetti, dust confetti, like the bag of uh, remnants you buy at the engraving bureau. So use a good tape, and we have one out there that's, that's uh, one of the kid strikes that's still got the boot in it. It works well. <clears throat> then go back. This is nice and dry now. Peel your patch off. Apply the patch. Big thing I learned in Cambodia is when they put a patch on, okay, they, they, they bang it down with a hammer. I used to, I used to, the British used the word stitching. Stitching means you just roll it down, okay? But in Cambodia, not to hit the sides, they used a hammer, okay? And remember, everything is a hammer except the screwdriver. That is a chisel. So, and they do a lot of tire patching in Vietnam and Cambodia. Bang it down, okay? Then it's ready to put in, okay? When I mount a tire, I do the Greg LeMond method. I inflate the tube a little bit, put it inside the tire, then I roll the tire on, on the edge of a table. Watch out, because a lot of bikes have a rotor on it now and you don't want to bend the rotor, so I put it on the opposite side of the rotor and roll it on with the hands. A profound, a profound trick I've been doing lately is to lubricate the tire, okay? That's not trash, I will keep this separate. Lubricate the tire, okay? Um, Dawn dish soap, they make stuff called Ruglide. It doesn't work as well as Dawn. And if that doesn't work, this is very slippery, okay? Rub the banana peel inside the tire and it will roll on like butter. No tire levers ever for putting a tire on, never. 
Okay, not even those little jack things they can pinch. Do I have a tire lever? No. Most tires I can get off without the tool. Oh, there's my super glue. The trick to getting the tire off without the tool is to pinch the tire. And remember, air is a very, very strong material. It holds up 75 ton planes. Air is that powerful. It holds the airplanes in the air. Squeeze the tire in, roll it down. You'll have a little window at the end, peel it off. Your glue is dry, your patch is on, a little bit of air to give it volume inside the tire. Roll the tire on to the rim. Inflate gently. Check to make sure it's seated all the way around evenly. If there's an any, squeeze it in, put a little bit of lube. I used to have a tire thing, but I don't carry that for thin air. A little uh, grabber tool that pulls the tire out. But keep putting air in and it'll pop into place. If it's got an Audi, stop pumping. Put the Audi in, and the Audi is usually caused by an inner tube flap under the bead of the tire, okay? Profound, when you put the tube in, push the valve up into the chamber of the tire. Push the valve. The rubber here is thicker than the rest of the rubber. Push that into the chamber of the tire, and then uh, install it. Um, on this little bike yesterday, the little kid's trike we bought, we didn't have the right tube. I had a 16 instead of a 12. So I took the 16, I put a little air in it, and I took a blunt instrument. That's blunt. Okay. And I did the telescoping trick, okay? So now I have an adjustable inner tube, okay? It's just a bag of air. Don't fret. It's a bag of air, and I can adjust it to any size. The world record for me is a 27 inch tube into a 16 inch bicycle wheel. So that is uh, the telescoping trick. Some people fold it. I don't like the fold, that makes bad edges, okay? And do it opposite the valve just in case there's a lot of weight there, you want it to stay balanced, okay? Questions so far, I haven't had, it. and they're all awake, okay, good. Um, this was one of my favorite tricks. We were in uh, on one of those high-end uh, tandem tours down the Mississippi in 2006, and my crank thread stripped on my tandem. My crank thread stripped on the tandem. So I sent somebody over to uh, the uh, True Value Hardware, and they, I said, buy me a, uh, a half-inch bolt, because it's a 916 crank, and, a, and three, uh, two nuts. Uh, I put that in there, I didn't have the wood at the time, and I bolted it on. So, today's cranks are far enough from the frame that the nut won't interfere. First I tried putting uh, aluminum cans in there and things like that, that didn't work real well. When I first did it, I was just pedaling on the spindle, okay, or the axle, and it kept rolling my foot back. So that night on the ship, I went into the uh, engine room, where they have a, a shop, and I said, I need a uh, four inch by four inch piece of wood with a half inch hole in the middle. They were happy to do it because they're tired of working on engines, uh, especially when they have diesel these days. So this was a part of the paddle wheeler on the Delta Queen and they had a lot of that hard wood and it's, it's, it's a good piece of wood. So that became the pedal for my, uh, for my trip. Uh, I don't need to pass that around. Uh, I talked about trying to put the shim in there uh, I am a, uh, I have a uh, advanced degree in shimology, okay? I don't go anywhere without an assortment of shims. I have saved a lot of those $6,000 tours with shims. And I like this, um, is that magnet? I was wondering whether it was. These, uh, these walled shims, these are about two bucks. They, uh, they have a flange at the end, so you can push it in. You can use several of them together to achieve various thicknesses. That'll, that's a pass around too, okay? Various thicknesses. And it, it's for putting a small seat post into another bike. And we have some weight weenie people that buy a small seat post for their road bike and they thin down the shim and they put it in the bigger frame so they have a thinner, lighter seat post. That's, that's the weenie uh, people. I'm gonna take a bite. Questions? What else is in here? Huh. First of all, keep your chain in good shape. I used to buy this stuff called uh, Evaporust. 
It's about $60, $70 a gallon. Then I found at Ace Hardware, I mention Ace a lot because I prefer those kinds of places over um, the, uh, the big places when I can. I discovered 47% vinegar and it's amazing. This chain, uh, first of all, I put this in the, uh, the front part of the car, the trunk, so that it would get nice and sloshy on the trip out here. Uh, and I'm also a, a brushologist. I like, I like, this is a tablecloth, okay. I like brushes. So, that was, that chain looked like this before we came out, okay? It's, a, it's an amazing difference, okay? It takes the rust off. You can put old scissors in there, uh, tractor parts, and it, it leaves it uh, unoxidized. You said it was vinegar and what? No, vinegar. 40, 47%. 47%. And uh, normal household vinegar is 5%. Okay, you can wow. smell it, can't you? It smells like a dark room. Remember yeah. that? Not that kind of dark room. Okay, <laughs> all right. It's just, that was, that was uh, 48 hours of sitting in the car. I, I started with 30% vinegar, and there was a guy checking out, and he had, it looked like 17%. I said, you know, you can buy that stuff in 30%, and he turned the bottle, and it was 47%, okay? Ace Hardware, 47% vinegar. You wait about 30 years. Yeah, that's all right, if you got the time, yeah. Industrial vinegar, industrial vinegar, yeah. They also, during the pandemic, you could buy a gallon of uh, isopropyl alcohol there and, and it was powerful, 99% uh, isopropyl. So you can use that, gee, okay. So what do you do when you get grease on you? I don't have any with me. But what I do for grease, sunblock, best. Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, I used to have a bottle of uh, olive, olive, what's that? I yeah, I thought you had some sunblock. Okay. Do that again. Have you ever tried using Coca-Cola? I put it in here sometime and I use it for battery acid. Oh, for that? Yeah. It doesn't work as well, for me. But I know that if you put a penny in a Coke, you get a dime after a while. <laughs> um, uh, 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 Noxema, anything oily. Vinegar at the Italian restaurant, uh, not vinegar, oil. Olive oil at the Italian restaurant has a lot of advantages to a cyclist. The olive oil will get the grease off the hands. Like dissolves like, okay? The oil has oil in it and oil dissolves grease. Grease is the same as oil except it's got soap in it to make it thicker. Um, what else works for that uh, olive oil? And the olive oil on a cold day, you can smear on your knees. Remember the saying, cover the knees below 70 degrees. I don't see any teens in here or even 20-somethings. Those knees have a limited lifespan. Those knees need to be covered below 70. The knees, most important part, okay? You can see runners out there with red legs, but they're not going as fast as you. There's a lubricant in the kneecap, and I've had some serious knee issues, and I've had those rooster comb injections. Uh, the knees have to be covered below 70, uh, non-negotiable, okay? You just don't want to go out. So if you haven't done that lately, start doing it. Um, knees, that's the most important thing because there's a lubricant in there that's very sensitive. Uh, while we're on cold weather, I don't have a newspaper here. Napkin, paper, piece of paper, anybody? There you go. They'll give you another one. Okay. I use newspaper, and you can usually get free newspapers at the entrance to the 7-Eleven. On a cold day, I'll crumple my newspaper. Big, big one. Tabloids work, okay? And you put this between your one shirt and the other shirt, okay? Right here in the chest. Remember, the head and the chest are the two parts that control the, the everything else. The, the, ski, the skiers say if you have cold hands and feet, put another hat on, because this is the regulator of your body. So this, this air pockets give a little air movement in there. And some people put baggies between two pairs of socks, but that can make the foot sweat. But I do that and I tape, I, I duct tape my shoes. Don't use the fancy stuff. 
uh, in the winter over the fronts of the shoes. And I put clear tape, because I don't want it to look like Duck City, clear tape on the front part of my helmet, not the back. Front part, and that has an amazing effect on keeping everything uh, at a better, more comfortable temperature. So the piece of paper between your two layers, this is not good against the skin, so between your under layer and your outer layer, and it acts as a good wind block from the front. You don't need it in the back. Uh, the other thing I discovered, uh, I've had many different substances in the last 50 years. Coffee's never been one of them. But coffee, uh, in, in, in high amounts, and even moderate amounts, uh, is, accounts for a five degree difference in your extremities, okay? Toes and hands. Coffee will make the hands and feet. Gabe Merkin, I got, this is in the Merkin report. He's a, uh, an 87 year old uh, avid recumbent cyclist in Florida. He, he doesn't travel anymore, but he still rides his recumbent tie trike every day. And, and it has a, a terra trike also. Uh, Caffeine, uh, nicotine also, uh, five degree difference in the extremities, so uh, be careful of that. Oh, when you, when you do your vinegar thing, do not mix it up with your iced tea. Uh, two things I, my wife and I decided to give up a few years ago, and I, may, I was a Dr. Pepperaholic, I'll still have one on occasion. Uh, soft drinks and chips. Chips have acrylamide, I just learned. This is not just bicycles, we do life here. Acrylamide, look up acrylamide. Just think of acrylic windows. Acrylamide, that is, that is a nasty substance that's very underexposed. And uh, soft drinks, because I have a type one daughter and we're very conscious about the foods. Um, I mean, she'll take a shot and drink a beer, but uh, most of the time, most of the time uh, we avoid those uh, and when we're out, I'll, I'll have a, a Dr. Pepper once in a while because a doctor wouldn't give you anything bad, would he? No, so that's the vinegar thing. If you wanted, fa they, there's a thing on YouTube, a lady did the, the vinegar, the evaporust and hen household vinegar and she time-lapsed this thing for about two weeks and it took two to three weeks and her horseshoes still weren't as rust free as the 30 or the 47%. So it's amazing stuff. I use it around the house. And we also, we spray vinegar on counters for, we have terrible ants. Vinegar is, is pretty, if anybody has a better ant trick, I am all ears, okay? Vinegar with ants. No more questions? Okay. Um, Leathermans are good to have because they have a plier, okay? The multi-bike tools don't have pliers. And I, I remember, 25 years ago, I was on a Baltimore bike club ride and a bike broke down and I'm on the side of the road and I got a, it looks like an operating room. I had a crowd of people around me and I'm trying to fix something and I go five millimeter, somebody handed me a five millimeter, uh, six millimeter, somebody handed me that. Leatherman, Leatherman, leather, and the men stood around like this. Leather what? Women were carrying back then, okay? Men were carrying it. If you went to a ham radio festival, a horse show, we'll get to that chain, I haven't forgotten you. A horse show or a, a car event, they'd say, which one do you want? They all have the Leatherman, so that's a very good thing to have. If the chain breaks, okay, I have a broken chain here. Um, you gotta use a chain tool, okay? You push the pin out, some of the modern chains, starting with the 9, 10, 11 speeds, I still do it. If I can identify a chain that the pin will go in or out of, I will fix the chain, okay? But since this is, a and, and then they have the, the clips, okay? The little chain fastening clips, they're about way overpriced at $5. In fact, when I get a used bike in or repair and the person wants a new chain, I net the old clip. Chains do stretch, but the little clip, the master link, let's call it. That only stretches microns. You can use those things, okay? And one micron uh, on the chain is not gonna affect it. Here's one that's so stiff, you can hold up a rural mailbox with it. You ever seen those welded chains? You can do that. So you do that, and if I can put the pin in, one of the things is what's called a stiff link, okay? Um, oh, and your chain, if you have to go to the next link down, um, you just have a shorter chain and you avoid large sprocket front, large sprocket back, you avoid that. Um, uh, the other part of the chain thing is that I always carry an outer and inner link set, I call it a setup. 
Because if you push that pin out, anybody ever get one back in? Anybody ever get one back in? Anybody ever put the, well, you got time on your hands. Right. Anybody ever put a freewheel back together with the eighth inch balls and the little string in the paws? Not fun, okay? I, 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 there's too many people in line for me to do that with. So I carry a setup. It's an Audi and an Innie. Then you can just take the chain off, wind up with an Audi and an Innie there, and you put this in and your chain's back to the same length. So if you get a skip on your bike, every third, fourth, second revolution, it's a stiff link in the chain, okay? You can look at your chain like that. Oh, there is a stiff link. Take the stiff link, you can do it on your bike, make it into an A. Okay, A, zoom in to the cameraman. And bend the chain against the grain, against the grain. Not with the grain, against the grain. Then make it into a V and bend the chain against the grain, okay? And the stiff link, there's another one, right there. That one is, that one is, yeah, that could be beyond. Now, vinegar, again, soak this thing in vinegar. And when you do the chain lubing thing, it's like air in the tires and vitamins. We have the most expensive urine in the galaxy. Can anybody figure out why? Vitamins. We take expensive, I, I do a minimal amount for some of my arthritic conditions, but it's better to eat the banana than the banana pill, okay? The orange than the orange juice. The beet rather than the beet pill. What could be more convenient? I hate beets, I'll just take the beet. There's nothing, there's a snake oil. So the, uh, how did I get into this? I don't know. Where was I before this? Chain. Oh, chain, chain lube, yeah, most expensive urine. We also have, uh, we have a, 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 on this trip, $6,000 ahead, and the men are up at six o'clock in the morning for an eight o'clock ride, pumping their tires on the top deck. The expensive rooms are on the top deck, right below it. So clink, 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 and the people that paid for the posh cabins, they don't want the clink, clink, clink. And these guys are putting 130 pounds in their tires. 130, oh, I'll go faster, sleeveless guys. I'll go fast, faster than this, okay? because I have more air. Not true. Our daughter did a coast down test in the neighborhood. We started 20 pounds, went to 160 pounds on the coast down. The sweet spot was 80 to 90. Her conclusion in this experiment was that the wheel vibrated so much that it slowed the bike down. So 80 to 90 was the sweet spot. It cornered better. Uh, it's always better to have a little bit less air in the rain. It grips better, okay? And new science is finally on my side. They're going with a little bit larger tires. The men used to have a pissing contest to see how thin a tire they could get on their bicycle. They, they, it was false. Now the, the thing is the thin tire is now a little bit wider. The contact patch on the road is similar and everyone's more comfortable. Dunlop invented the pneumatic tire, Mr. Dunlop, because his wife got headaches from the hard tires on the safety bicycles. So I tell these guys, look, you paid 12,000 for both of you on this trip, and do you want your wife to have a headache tonight in the cabin, okay? Let a little air out, have a more comfortable ride. You don't need all the air. If a little is good, you may not need a lot. Did, did I answer the chain question okay? That was you? <laughs> Okay, there's also a AAA for bicycles now called the Better World Club, they do bikes. But if you can fix it yourself, you are much better off. So, on this last, oh, a file is a must. I, I have a small one and I had this big one. Here's one of my favorite tools. That was made years ago out of a turnbuckle. Favorite tool. Um, I true most of my wheels on my bicycle, okay? Most of them I true on the bicycle. Light bikes are nice for things like this. Weight is not the biggest thing you're fighting on the bike. Now, the number one thing is wind. And by default, a recumbent is usually a little bit better in the wind, okay? I like, I like a more upright position. I do not have anything to prove about being a compulsive overachiever and putting cool over comfort. Many, especially men, would like to put cool over comfort, so they're way back, okay? Uh, the neck rest helps me way back, maybe not so comfortable, but very cool, okay? 
I'm, I would rather enjoy the ride, okay? If I'm gonna put fun between my legs, I want it to be comfortable. So I threw my wheels on my bicycle. I put my thumb against the brake pad. And if you don't have a spoke tool, who's got my Nipex plier? There it is, okay. Uh, I borrowed this wheel from the bike shop in town because mine went bad and I couldn't fix it. I couldn't fix it. There's a oxymoron. I used this tool, um, parallel jaw, to, to tighten and loosen spokes. And, and I do a whole wheel building thing. It's not gonna happen today. But if you get an Audi from hitting a curb or a bump, an Audi, you take two heavy weights, something that's heavy, if you don't have that hammer and backup, Pound that blip in carefully. And the other side, I have a squeezer tool for this, I didn't bring it. Pound both sides in. If you have an any, deflate the tire, put your Nipex on there, and very carefully pull out the any. Then when you're done with that, take a long file. We've had woodworkers here, the long plane is good for taking curves out. The small plane will just ride the curves. And take that and get that smooth. This one has a, a click in it at the seam, okay? That is not a, uh, a major crime, okay? You can just take that click out, and if there's a seam in there, the seam will eventually wear down. Um, so if you have an itty, loosen the spokes in that area. They'll probably be already loose. And take the turnbuckle tool, Put it against the hub, like that, and into the rim. Can you see out there in the nosebleed section? Okay. And turn the turnbuckle. We're about to capsize. And push the innie to an Audi, and then draw the spokes back in. So this will be on the hub, and the uh, smooth part on the rim, right like this, and push the turnbuckle, turn it gradually, and push the rim out, and then pull those spokes back in. Okay, let's talk about brakes for a second. Um, people come in and wanted their, I need new brakes. I need new brakes. Um, uh, most of the time they don't. And COVID was an amazing time because uh, we had bikes that came in that had not been sat upon for decades. They had manure on the tires, hay growing through the spokes, and mold on the saddle. We resurrected most of those bikes with just air and a little bit of cleaning. So you want to keep your, if it's really nasty, a very light Scotch-Brite or sandpaper on the rim. It gets the glaze off. Anything that's ever come out of a human body, smokestack, or automobile goes on the ground. When it's wet, it gets put on your rims and gets into your brakes. So when that glaze, glaze, is glass, glaze comes from glass, which is sand. The world's full of sand. Sand gets up into the brake pads, gets hot. It becomes like a diamond, and it starts eating up the aluminum. The little bits of aluminum then get into your brake pads. They get hot and turn into scrapers. So you want to keep your bake pads clean and your rim clean. I take, and don't be bashful, this is 100 grit. Put the brake, the th now we have, we have hub brakes now. I don't like to call them disc brakes because this is a disc brake. This is a huge disc. It's the biggest disc you can buy, okay? And this is not a major crime either, having a disc brake this size. So I call that a hub brake and I call this a rim brake. While your assistant squeezes the brake handle, you go back and forth. This will dress that brake pad to the correct profile of the rim and your brakes will never have worked better. Now, when they're very old and like stones, you can put new brake pads in and then clean that down. So that's what I do for brake pads. And you say, well, I'm taking rubber off. I'll get less life. It's gonna cost me more money. You'll get longer life and your rims will last longer if you keep those things sanded down. You had a question? Well, think of one. All right. Um, Oh, here was a good one. <clears throat> I was in Florida in 1978, and my stem broke right there. My stem broke right there, and this will be on display. Stem broke, cracked through and through. So there was nothing open. I found a, a drugstore, and they had one of those little tiny things 
the little kit where you can fix anything. Picture hanging kit, uh, little screws, okay, uh, maybe a nut, a piece of picture wire. And I said, oh, there's sheet metal screws in there. So with my Swiss Army knife in my $10 flop house room, I took the uh, awl, A-W-L, of my Swiss Army knife out and I, I reamed, a, that's a reamer, not an awl. I, I used to have fingers. I reamed a hole in here. I just reamed a hole in the back of the stem. I reamed it and I just dug into the aluminum with the, with the reamer and the Swiss Army knife. And in the screwdriver of the Swiss Army knife, I pushed that sheet metal, I punched a little thing into the handlebar and I had two sheet metal screws going from here to the handlebars. So that kept the handlebar from moving, okay? Today it's not so important. In fact, on my Easy Racers, that's my choice ride today, um, on my Easy Racers, I do not tighten the handlebars fully. I have them snug. There's no force on that handlebar. Uh, and I, I prefer a cockpit on a bicycle. I like my cockpit. Computer, water bottles, mirror, all the neat stuff in my cockpit. And I also like my elbows at my sides. So that the these don't even require steering at 20 miles an hour. I can just move my fingers and steer the bike. So I leave them loose, because sometimes I'll feel better this way, sometimes I'll feel better that way. Not as low as Mr. Bike Different. Please knock some sense into him and have him raise those bars a little bit. He's, he can't decide whether he wants a road bike or this, so get him to put that thing up a little bit. I did the same thing with pedals eight years ago. I was in Italy on one of those tours and I forgot my bike shoes. And I had a pair of these things with me, okay? This is a low, grippy, uh, sharp knife is safer than a dull knife, so I have a, prefer a grippy pedal, low, long, and with my uh, ankle condition, I need to change my foot frequently. Back in the, back in the old days, I would, uh, at my bike classes, we'd go for a ride in the last class and I would tell people, oh, you better strap in tight, you better pedal with the ball of your foot. Old science, old science. If it weren't so profound, Grant Peterson, who, with whom I collaborated on this book, but I let him write it. Chapter one wouldn't be don't pedal circles. The Homo sapien was never designed with an activity of lifting the leg, only in a gym. There is really no lifetime activity lifted enough to walk. But when people tell me they're pulling up and they must have their little dinky pedals and their clip-in shoes, I look the other way and I just smile. So 600 pair of those pedals later, only two returns. They have a, a 30 day, there's a little pitch going on here. There's a 30 day thing, but it will change your life to, to move your foot around when you ride. It will enhance your life. I even use them on racing bicycles. Uh, you had a question? Anybody? Yeah. Uh, I, I have Thanks for staying awake, by the way. I have neuropathy, so being able to change my foot position uh, on the pedals. Yes, sir, it's good. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Barefoot Pedal uh, in there, the same guy with the low bar, he, he says the foot's got to slip around. That's okay. I'm not a, a person that believes in your foot must be clipped to the bicycle. And what's this new thing I see? I'm trying to figure this out. I've looked it up. I've searched it several times. People come in from the end of a ride. The foot comes off the pedal. Like two miles away and it's dangling out there. Is it to say to everybody, I've got clipless pedals, look at my shoes? The foot's hanging out, kind of like putting the, the opening the car door long before you stop. I don't know why the foot dangles. Oh, this trick is a must. This is my latest. I found this one on the latest trip. We, we can't carry all these spokes along with us. So I bring I bring some short recumbent spokes, okay, from 20 inch wheels, and I use a strong one for e-bike. This, this trick saved three people this time, okay? This bike gets heavier every year, and the hills get steeper, and the distances get longer each and every year. So, this particular bike that we had, fortunately, broke at the head. It broke at the head, okay? So, I had a short spoke with me. Okay, I'm gonna do a demo here. 
I had a short spoke. And I didn't want to take the whole wheel off and the disc rotor off and all this craziness to fix it. So I took the spoke off and it broke the head. This was amazing. Keep asking questions because I'm not working with my mouth right now. Anything you didn't, oh, where to find me? I'm at bike123.com. It's a small bicycle store in Maryland. I'm 28% retired. I don't work Wednesdays or Sundays. I still work, but the store's not open. And uh, we sell recumbent bicycles, fix a lot of bicycles. We do things at other shops, like that $200 tune-up guy when he turns them away. And we do everything same day. Mount Airy, Maryland. I'm there because like this venue, why isn't this in Chicago? Because they had more space here and it was cheaper. So, and I could not do what I'm doing. And I found it was a blessing in disguise having a destination store rather than being in a, uh, a crowded shopping center where I'd get people that stumbled in from the liquor store. Okay, so. In fact, before we were what we are, it was a convenience store that sold liquor and people still come in looking, four minutes. Oh, I was gonna give you 10 minutes. Give me 10. You want me to cut them off sooner or let No, go? later, <laughs> 10. No, it's four minutes, but I, I've got two, prof two profound things. I did a talk once and uh, there was a guy sitting in the audience, just one. It wasn't about this, it was something else. And I said, wow, you sat here an hour listening to this and I didn't have to do this. You could have gone, he says, oh, I, I'm not in the audience, I'm the next speaker. Uh, <laughs> All right, so it broke here. I'm tempted to cut this, but uh, the nipple was still intact, okay? The nipple was still intact. A spoke wrench would have saved us about two minutes today. It's like a quick release wheel. It saves you about eight, stay, stay, stay eight seconds, okay. Almost got it. I don't like flubbing. Time, tension, stay. Yeah, I don't want to spill my iced tea. The vinegar, no problem. Oh, look what's going on here. That's what's going on. Now we can get full, full, wow. Thanks for mentioning that. Okay. All right, so the nipple's good. Now, my next trick, uh, for the next trip, I am having a tool made to put S-bends in the end of a spoke. That's when it breaks at the head. I put an S-bend in so I can weave it in and not have to take the, uh, the gears off. Okay, almost got it. All right. Remember, if you have to tighten a spoke, it's clockwise looking at it from the tire. All right. And I ride this bike. I, ever, I, I never go to one of these events without a bicycle because I don't even like walking to the men's room. Okay. I say, my mom used to say, don't stand when you can sit. Don't sit when you can lie down. Eat before you're hungry. Drink before you're thirsty. And I say, don't, don't walk when you can ride a bicycle. There, okay. All right, so the spoke is there. It's broken right here. I take this spoke and I put it in, all right? I put that one in. Oh, and if you lose the nipple, it's very, or if the spoke is broken off inside the nipple, not enough time, let air out of the tire. Don't have to take the wheel off the bicycle. Let air out of the tire, push the spoke up through the rim, move it out of the way, put the nipple on and pull the thing back down. So. I put the, uh, the surrogate spoke in there, okay? I take the good spoke, I fold it over the head, okay? I fold it over the head, okay? I crimp it with the pliers, and then I either zip tie, wire, or put a brass sleeve on it, okay? So that is the, the spoke fix of the day, and it has saved a lot of people and I only have to carry a few short 20 inch spokes on the trip. I'm clipping, I'm, I'm clipping this part off, yeah. yeah. I'm clipping that part off just to get junk out of there. Yeah. So I, and remember, these things are like guitar strings, they're under tension. So I do that and I zip tie this and then I adjust it, okay? Um, and if it breaks down here, uh, a spoke is a very flexible part. I don't have to take the freewheel off. I can usually sneak it under, bend it, 
and then it'll, it'll straighten out. If it's on the freewheel side, that's where my S-bend spoke comes in. It's basically a little Z, and you hook it in from the outside, and it saves you having to take this whole thing apart. So my, what I will do, the zip tie doesn't look uh, professional. I bought some brass tubing. I rem remember in the hardware store, the brass tubing, making model planes? I slip the brass tubing down over the spoke, fold the spoke over, and put the tubing up and crimp the tubing. So it'll be a neat repair. And there are tandem, the tandem, the payload on the tandem is a fifth of a ton. We have 400 pound teams on there. And those wheels. Yes. The tubing on before you yes. The tube together. And then yeah, clip right. it and bring it up. Yeah. It just looks a little bit like somebody was thinking, okay? It looks less duct tapey. What was the last thing I was gonna talk about? Um, spoke, da, da, and I think we covered a few, th anything that has been plaguing you with your bike, whether it's your bike shop or anything to do with bikes, because I forgot more than too many people know. Nothing, everything's good. When people ask me, I, I, I was over there trying to get a piece of rope out of my free will and a lady pulled up on the day six, she says, do you need any help? I said, are you a psychiatrist? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Why do you have to fix the spoke? Why couldn't you just continue? Today, bicycles have too damn few spokes in them. Right. And if you break a spoke, you can't do much about that area, okay? Oh, there's one more, one more. All right, if you got a rim that's way crazy warped, okay? Way crazy warped, I love this one. There's the rope I gotta take out anyway. I don't know where I picked that up, wow. Anybody ever see the, wow, well, where did that come from? That was on uh, Fairgrounds Road. That's, wow, that's just too much to have in there. Okay, oh, oh, what do you put on chains to lubricate them, Mr. Chain? Snake oil? Yeah, snake oil. The wax, a lot of people use this wax stuff, okay? In the old days, we'd boil paraffin and mix it with Mobile One in a crock pot and all that. If you talk to 10 people about chain lube, you'll get 25 opinions, like recumbents or, or uh, bicycle, e-bikes, which are still, e-bikes are still, I sell them for the last 40 years, Betamax versus VHS. And I will do another lecture on that next time. So if the wheel is warped, it's warped this way, it's warped that way, and those spokes on that side are already loose, and the ones where you want it to go are already too tight, you're really stuck, okay? You can't, make those spokes any tighter and get that way. Your rim is bent. So I, I put it on a table, and if I have a hammer, I push down, you see it's flexible. I have a carpet at the shop, and I always tell people, hey, you're, is that your car out there? And when they're not looking, I will give it a couple of whacks. They, I, my nickname is the king of swing, come from hammers. And if that doesn't work, my door jam trick, this one works really well, and you can just push the way you want it to go, then bring it back with the spokes, okay? But a lot, I get so many free wheels because people just get rid of stuff. Um, who's after this? Anybody, anybody, next, next group, or are you just in the lounge? Go ahead. Don't do that at auctions, you'll be buying things, yeah. It's not for goop. Oh, if the chain is gooped up, yeah. you put, uh, you, you uh, fill that jar with, not this one, that's my iced tea. You fill the jar with simple green or something and shake it. A Coke bottle's worth. What you got in that jar? You want to smell? It's, yeah. Tell you tell me. me. Not, don't take a big whiff. 47% vin, not for your average salad. Okay, if you've ever been in a dark room, that's what dark rooms smell like. Oh! Yeah, Ace. Yeah, oh, it takes rust off anything. All those old rakes in the backyard. But what about other goop and stuff? That what I did was... Oh, wait, wait, get the goop off first. But listen... On my folding bike, there's a rubber tube. And that rubber tube split after a year. Yeah. And I wrapped some black tape around it. And the chain come up and got in the tape and pulled all of the goo off of that black tape. You got here late, but we use... What's it called? ESI tape. Yeah. No glue. Use that yeah. stuff? Yeah. I, I mean, it saved me a lot of copper. Yeah. This I keep. Well, the goo went in between the sprockets. So Here, get the goo out between. Oh, well, just that stuff. Soap and water. Okay. And agitate. And if you have nobody in your life agitating, agitate yourself, okay? She agitates. There you go. Yeah. Remember, he's the world's foremost authority of his opinion. Yeah. 
<laughs> and a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. He's listened to this seven times a day. He tunes me out. A man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. This I keep in every toolkit on every trip. This is a miracle shifter. Anybody ever seen a miracle shifter? There's a viral article on the internet about it that I wrote. A miracle shifter, okay? You know why it's a miracle shifter? Because it works with four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13 speed chains. Pessimists call it friction. I call it smooth. That's a smooth shifter. This is all I ride. That one has a cockamamie twister with clickies. I had, and, and the clicky is in my face because I borrowed this wheel and it's got seven in the back. I had eight. This will work with anything. So I always keep this in my toolkit and on any of these five figure bike trips that people are on, I can put that in the handlebar or hose clamp it on and they can get home. Remember, you only need gears for getting up the hill. You only need brakes for going down the hill, okay? And uh, there's nothing worse than walking because I have a bad ankle, this testament. Last, last chance for questions. All right, there's some really good seminars coming up today. And be sure, be sure to visit Laid Back Bike Report on the internet. Be sure, there is stuff on there that I haven't even seen yet that I can't wait to see. And they're filming this today, taping it today, chipping it today, whatever it is. And it, Gary Solomon is an absolute wizard in this field. He knows how to handle people. He's a retired, some, what was his boring job? Pharmacy. He's a, yeah, he had a boring job. He came from a long line of pharmacists. I come from a long line of overreactors. I was the first mechanical type. Everybody was pencil pushers, uh, earning the government a lot of money, my money. And uh, I decided that I like to take things apart. It started with lawnmowers, motorcycles, and then I said, I was in the back of the lawnmower shop in the 60s, and I said, what is it with these people? They're, they're old, they're 30, and they're riding bicycles. And I thought there was something to it. So the bicycle, because it was a machine and it was sports and activity, it excited me. It wasn't just taking engines apart, okay? It combined sports and it combined uh, mechanics. And I love to tinker with things, okay? And a lot of people in bicycle, I'm, we're over in the campground and talk about tinkerers. Huh? These, the only thing more tinkery is probably an RV, uh, a, a ham radio person. But these, the, right? These uh, 73s, rag chewers, any hams here? Okay, I'm a vegetarian. Okay, um, what's your call? Having, having a long time. Okay, a call is what? B-I-J. Okay, good. So anyway, uh, it's a tinkering sport, it's fun. And I have in the bike shop what's called work study. I've had people come down from Canada and from Europe to spend a week in the shop as volunteers. Greg started off as a volunteer in the shop. He was, he's a, he's a, the government. And uh, he came in and got so excited about the way we handle people and the way we do things that he decided to uh, come on board. Now he goes to these shows and loves recumbent bikes and has a great time with the people. And you never know what's gonna walk in the door. You never know what's gonna, whether it's what's gonna roll in the door or walk in the door. But it's, a, it's an exciting field. This is the biggest, best cycle con I have ever attended. And I, I believe it's going to, uh, it's going to go past the tipping point. We're going to make the news. Not that that's so good. I kind of got into recumbents mainly because it was comfortable and my wife absolutely won't sit on an ass hatchet anymore. That's a bicycle seat. And because it was different. I was a, a shrimpy little kid and I needed some kind of power. So I got into bicycles because I could go faster than the other people. And I tuned my bike up to go faster. But maybe if this gets really past the tipping point and everybody's doing it, some of us like me said, God, I no longer have a gimmick. So maybe I'll just start riding this thing and having a good time. You have been a great crowd. Uh, Bike123.com is where to find me. And the complaint department is open Tuesday nights on my fourth floor, okay? That's it. I'll leave the toys out. Now I gotta put this wheel back together. <laughs>